Hey Dominik, what do you know about HTMX? Uh, yeah, HTMX is a, a library that has gained uh, some traction lately again um, that allows you to um, do like AJAX stuff, CSS transitions, WebSockets, server-side events uh, um, directly in your HTML using attributes, like basically um, these kind of directives. And if you go to their website, you will have some basic examples that you can basically add these HX minus or HX dash uh, uh, directives anywhere in your code and it will like do some interactive stuff. For example, if you click a button here, it will issue actually a post request via Ajax and um, replace the outer HTML of this given document, the response that you get. And uh, yeah, you can like on the website, there are a couple of uh, more examples that you can go um, into, like for example, edit stuff where you use it to post like a form uh, with the put uh, request to a given URL or to a provided URL and it says like um, it should use the current or this uh, as a current target and swap the outer HTML with the response and then you have like this document here. So it, it basically extends the functionality of the browser from just like making simple uh, get and post requests to a lot more like dynamic stuff that you can do and even like you can with the response you can do is like a lot of things like select certain elements from it that you want to replace you can replace the element that you currently clicked on or that was triggered somehow and then or you can replace any other element on the uh, on the page you have different triggers it doesn't need to be a click it can be also a scheduled like polling thing uh, where you say every two seconds you want to trigger something or on mouse enter or on like key presses and so on so it actually gives you a lot of functionality where you would usually write a lot of JavaScript out of the box, just with like HTML attributes. Yeah, and I really love this approach just because it reduces the complexity so much, especially with uh, things like state handling. One example, like when we create a post archive in WordPress where you want to filter certain posts like by category, but then also by tags and I have multiple buttons and things, then when you want to do that in a dynamic way with uh, JavaScript, with Ajax requests, the state handling can get very, very complex very quickly. Whereas with the HTMX approach, you don't need to write much complex code because uh, you can quickly go from a static version that you have created anyways already kind of with a static code that you generated on the server side to a very interactive version by just uh, yeah defining this relationship of the interactive uh, buttons and and drop downs and the container of the post that you want to replace uh, when you filter things. So it really offloads a lot of work in terms of the workload from the client side to the server side, but also a lot of the thinking, I, I feel like, from complex React components and stuff like that to yeah, a rather simple HTML directive that is easy to work with. Yeah, this is actually what we have been uh, teaching also developers that come to us and work with us a lot of the times, right? Because like WordPress out of the box gives you a lot of stuff with like rendered HTML pages, but like static uh, or like real routes, like you have the archive pages, you have pagination, uh, you can already query or filter by categories through like um, uh, URL parameters, like query parameters and so on. And this is already there. And now you just have to make it interactive. And this is where actually this shines, right? Because like before, we actually wrote a lot of like uh, JavaScript to do that, like custom JavaScript. Uh, but now you can just do that with uh, attributes. And you also don't need to um, add like WP uh, REST API endpoints or something like that, get like a different data source, but you can actually work with the existing HTML pages that you already have, right? And just like uh, uh, progressively sort of enhance them to be more interactive. Also can be used with like any backend language, right? So um, nowadays, a lot of talk is going on like in these modern Java JavaScript frameworks where you want to have like server side rendering and client side rendering and you want to like make the best experience possible with that but not everyone can actually switch their entire stack to just JavaScript only and not everyone wants to do that so um, for people that are stuck with like a different backend language kind of or, or want to use a different backend language that's a great way to uh, integrate easily uh, some interactivity to the side. 
Also, you don't really need a build process, right? Because you just write stuff in your HTML and you include like the, the library via script tag. And basically in, in, in the same like vein of like uh, Alpine JS or Tailwind JS, where you use HTML, like your component code or whatever, or, or your HTML code as like, and you add everything that is related to this code inside of a single file and you don't have to go out and like create a separate CSS file, a separate JavaScript file to add like this stuff. And this is also what I really like about it. So that's all great. But uh, what are the things that you would like to see improved actually? Well, there's always something, right, that you can improve. But uh, um, for me, what actually also prevents me from adding that to all of our projects, it's like it's a monolith uh, file. And it is like 14 kilobytes of minified and gzipped JavaScript. This doesn't sound like a lot, but I feel it quite of is a lot, especially if you look at the size of the JavaScript that normally our websites have. Uh, it's actually quite big. Then it's not possible to uh, code split it or to lazy load it. And I would really like to see like these kind of things, especially like the lazy loading. To me, um, it feels like there is a lot of like uh, async stuff going on, or basically the, the main thing that happens is you attach event listeners, right? And only when something is triggered, you need to load the JavaScript or evaluate it or whatever. So this is something that I would really like to see improved. It also still supports IE 11. While that's a good thing for some people, it also prevents uh, the library from using uh, modern browser features. Although you could, of course, set that up in the build process and like polyfill them or whatever. But for example, there's like no mutation observer uh, used when you add like new elements to the DOM manually. Like I kind of feel like also because we are working with custom uh, elements uh, quite uh, often that I really like this behavior that when you add something to the DOM, it's automatically hooked up, right? And you don't need to manually call like a, a function to analyze the DOM and then uh, do this, for example. And then like some other uh, downside is like some people say that it might be insecure uh, because it replaces like HTML and you could also like inject scripts with that. But I think this is like true for any technology that renders some HTML. And if you have user inputted data, you just have to make sure that it get sanitized correctly, right? I think especially this sizing and the, the architecture of the library, it could need like a, a modern uh, a facelift. And I see that a lot of the times, I think there are also like other libraries that use these directives like Alpine. And I already had the idea that it, there should be like a common like uh, library that they all build upon on like handling these uh, attributes or like directives and lazy loading code from different areas so that you can have like, if, if you in your entire code base only use like the normal click trigger and only use get requests then you should only need to um, load the code for this and not like for anything uh, else right that's it i think in in general it, it is an awesome library like hmx looks uh, really great but currently we're not using it with uh, with flint right we, we could maybe use it in some uh, components where we heavily depend on it yeah we'll see what the future brings absolutely yeah that was what i was about to say as well like bottom line hmx is awesome it's not a code library of flint or wordpress starter theme yet we might use it in the future maybe not as part of the core but still i'm thinking even regarding the comparatively large size we could load it with our javascript island architecture right and then at least like it doesn't interfere as much with the initial page load so you can still get quite some nice performance from it and so on and i'm very curious about trying this out and uh, seeing seeing the benefits in our projects me too